Direct your attention to the source. Direct attention to the source of the power. Direct attention to the source of the power. Acts chapter 3, 11 through 16. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, follow fellow Israelite, Israelites, excuse me, fellow Israelites, why do, does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or, or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this by faith in the name of Jesus. This man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him. As you can all see, may God continue to bless his word. Let us pray. Father, be right now as we share around this your word with these your people. Give us all receptive hearts and minds. God, we're, look, we're looking to hear from you, God. So speak, God. Speak to our hearts. Speak through this your humble servant. Allow me to decrease as you increase. We'll be careful, God. Give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. These last few weeks we've been talking about the power, the power that, that comes from knowing Jesus Christ and pardoning our sins, the power that Holy Ghost power. Amen. Anybody afraid of Holy Ghost power? Don't be afraid of Holy Ghost power. But I'm here to tell you, Holy Ghost power will make you do some things you don't want to do. Holy Ghost power will make you love some folks you don't want to love. Amen. Make you go someplace you don't want to go. Amen. And we thank God for his Holy Ghost power that allows us to exercise the gifts that he has blessed us with. Everyone here has at least one gift. Amen. And we got to put those gifts in the circulation so God might be glorified and honored by our gifts. And, and one thing Jesus always told us, he said, we got to love everybody. Love your neighbor. Love your enemy. Who loves their enemy? Raise your hand. Hey. <laughs> Deacon Sam, I saw him like this, bro. I saw, they were like, hey. put the hand up. Let me begin with a story. The story of, of this pastor, and he was preaching on, on, on loving your enemies. And he began, you know, three-part series and got to the third part and he said okay you've been listening to me for three weeks about loving your enemy he said so who here can leave this place today and go out and say they love their enemy I'm gonna ask that question right now who can leave this place and go out and love their enemy and, and everybody started raising their hand one at a time you know what I mean one at a time and got everybody but one older woman on the on the second row and they he asked hold it who are you she said I'm Miss so-and-so he said, um, and you can't, she said, no, I, I, she said, I don't have any enemies. He said, uh-oh, let's get to the bottom of this. What do you mean you got no enemies? I have no enemies. He said, how old are you? She said, 96. He said, that's a miracle. That's incredible that you're 96 years old don't have any enemies. He said, come up here and tell us your secret. And she came up and they got her upstairs and gave her the microphone and said, tell us your secret. She said, I'll last all them snakes. <laughs> we don't have to outlast folks. But because we've got the Holy Spirit lives within us, it should enable us to love our enemies and our neighbors. It should enable us to do the work of the Lord, to enable us to go out to the highways and byways and tell folks about Jesus. It should make us be better Christians, amen? Not some days, but every day. It's a process of coming to know who Jesus Christ is. It's not about outliving folks, but it's about doing what's right right now. There is power. There is power. Who sing, you sing that song, don't you? In the, can I get a little bit? You got a voice? You don't need no music. Just come and give me a few bars. Come on, Shishi.
It's good to be the pastor. You just call on people. Get up here. Come on. You don't know it? Just sing a few, few bars. You don't do that song? Who does that song? There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. <laughs> there is power in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry, says I didn't mean to call it. Yes, I did mean it. You got somebody singing on that, Mr. Dan? There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Who sing that song? You sing that song. <laughs> Get the mic next, Lisa. There is power <laughs> in I couldn't think who sang that song. Now I know. <laughs> there is power in the name of Jesus. To do what? To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. She's, in, she's incognito over here in the corner. That's Lisa Boyd singing that song. Break every chain. Break every chain. That's Miss Holly Dixon. She moved down south. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is
Let the church say amen. Remember the A-team? He always said, I love when the plan comes together. Amen. <laughs> that song came to my head. I couldn't remember who sang it. I knew Sheila could sing anything. So I figured, throw it to her. Lisa's over there going. <laughs> Thanks, this boy. Thank you, music yeah. ministry. Yeah. Remind us that there is power in the name of Jesus. Have you ever been in trouble and you didn't know who to call on? Don't call the Ghostbusters. Call on the name of Jesus. Amen? I think we've all been there. In many of our cars, we had a handle right there by the window. They called it, oh, Jesus can't handle. You're going upside the road, you, you scream, oh, Jesus. Um, scream before you get to that point. When you get up in the morning, say, thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. When times are tough, say, thank you, Jesus. Amen? When boss about to leave, y'all say, help me, Jesus. We got to learn to call on the name of Jesus for there's power in the name of Jesus. You see, Jesus Christ is the source of the power. The power that's available to you and I as Christians, as brothers and sisters, as believers. That, that power comes from knowing Jesus Christ in the part of our sins. Amen. You don't just get that power because you're walking around here. You start casting out demons in the name of Jesus and you don't know Jesus. Look out. Amen. We got to know Jesus Christ, a part of our sins. Family. We sing that song, There is Power in the Name of Jesus. It's there to break some chains. The song says to break every chain. And you must identify what your chains are. For there's something that's holding you back, keeping you from, from being all that God wants you to be. Amen? From the pulpit to the door, we all have something that's holding us back. But we have the power of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, to break every one of those chains. Amen? When you have financial problems, call on the name of Jesus. I'm here to tell you, he, he'll be there. We always say he made our what? Come when you want him. But he's always on time. He's never been late. Amen? He don't mind being early either. But he's always right on time. In chapter 1 of Acts, we, we dealt a little bit with the the 40-day period of waiting that the apostles were waiting after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, 40 days before the ascension of Jesus Christ back from whence he came. So 40 days he, 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 he returned to, to glory. He returned home, amen? Uh, as we were waiting, Jesus, he, he, he began to talk to them about he was going to be resurrected, he, or he already been resurrected. He talked, I'm going to ascend back from whence I came. He told them that if you stay here, then you will receive Someone say power. power. Holy Ghost power. In, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we find these words, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. If you wait, he said, you'll receive power. I stand before you now and say the waiting is over. We have received the power. <laughs> Amen. We received. So they were waiting. Christ ascended back to glory, and he sent the power into the world to you and to me. We come into chapter 2, and it was 10 days after the ascension, 50 days after the resurrection. The Pentecost, in that first part of chapter 2 of Acts, we, we heard that there was a, a, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind. It didn't say a blowing wind, it said the sound of like the blowing of a violent wind, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. They didn't see tongues of fire. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Verse 4 says, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. There was wind. There was fire. There was tongues. Huh, there was power. On that day of Pentecost, after Pentecost, they thought they were drunk. And Peter began to defend them by preaching his first post-resurrection sermon. We find that in, in Acts chapter 2, verse 14, 14 through 41. After he preached, it says that 3,000 folks became believers. 3,000 folks were added to their number on that day. I, I preached once and, and 10 people joined. Hallelujah. 
He preached and 3,000 folks came to know Jesus. 3,000 folks who were lost came to know Jesus. Amen. They were in the upper room, 120 of them thereabouts, and they thought they were drunk and said, no, they're not drunk, but they have power. We ought to stand up in the morning and say, thank you, God, for the power. Don't we look at the mirror going, no, it's not that type of power. Thank God for the Holy Ghost power that's available to you and to me each day. When we get to chapter 3 of, of the, the book of Acts, Peter and John, they saw a man who was, who was lame from birth. He was in a great need physically, but also spiritually he was in trouble. Amen? He was spiritually lame, but he was, he was, he was, he was physically lame, but he was spiritually dead. The man needed money. He wanted money, but he needed something more than needed money. What they had was more than money. What they had was better than silver and gold. They were prepared to share with this man, but he had to be looking at them. For sometimes we miss our blessings by not looking at what God has in store for us. The man said, look, they said, look to the man, look at us. He said, give me some alms, give me some stuff. Silver and gold I ain't got, but what I got in the name of Jesus. Get up. Who said get up? Get up. Tell it, Deke, get up. But he, they didn't just say, get up, and say, get up over there. They went over and they seized him and said, get up. You, you know, sometimes you miss your blessing because you don't let nobody seize you. Get off me. Get off me. That man let him seize him. Say, get up. And, and, and it wasn't like he began with crawling. It wasn't like he began with small steps. It, it said immediately he jumped up. He went from limping to leaping. That I might preach, uh, limping to leaping. He went from, from uh, someone that, that could not do anything to someone who could leap. He went from someone who for his entire life, his entire life he had been lame. And on this day, he was able to walk. Now, I don't know about you, but if I couldn't walk for like two days in a row, and, and someone said, get up and help me get up, and I started running, I'm going to find out by whose name, by whose authority, by whose power, by what power, and I would be leaping too. I'm be leaping over top of the, whew. You couldn't catch me, brother SB. I'd be running so fast. But imagine 40 years, you ain't been able to walk, and now you can walk. I'd outrun Carl Lewis. I'm here to tell you. Usain Bolt ain't got nothing on me. If I, you, 40 years, you couldn't walk. This man was excited. This man developed a faith in Jesus Christ right then. Amen. Hallelujah. They used the power that was available to them because of their belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. They gave him wholeness, the hope that comes through faith in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ. We find these words in Acts chapter 3, 4 through 6. It said, Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but I have what I have, I, uh, what, but what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. This was not any old name. This was the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He was identifying who he was, amen? Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem, right? Raised in Nazareth. Can anything good thing come out of Nazareth? I don't know. But Jesus Christ came out. He identified with everybody. He identified with you and me. He started as a nobody. But he became, and he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He has all power in his hand. He's willing to share the power with you and I. You know, when you call the name of Jesus Christ, he gives you his power. He gives it to you for his glory. And the Lord God is a jealous God. Don't be trying to get credit for what you do in the name of Jesus. Have you seen preachers lay hands on people and they get healed and they try to take credit for it? You see preachers that preach a sermon and they think they're all that, the big old bag of party chips? We got to give God glory, honor, and praise. Amen. The power is not your power. It ain't my power. It's, it's the Lord's power. 
And he shares with us so we might do ministry. Amen? Well, God, you gave me this gift so I can get rich. No. I gave you that gift so you can, you can help my people. Minister to my people. That's why you got the gift. Amen? We thank God for what he does, but it's his power, not your power, not my power. Amen? So again, 3,000 people came to know the, the Lord on that day that after one sermon. Peter could have stopped right there. Been known as the baddest preacher ever. 3,000 people joined, but he kept on preaching. And more folks came to know Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins. Amen? So this leads Peter to his second post-resurrection sermon. We find that in Acts chapter 3, 12 through 26. The most remarkable feature of Peter's uh, sermon is that it's very, very Christ-centered. <laughs> it was Christ-centered. He directed the people, the crowd, attention away from both him and John and the, the, the lame man that was healed. I've seen folks do healings on television, and after the, the person's healed, all the attention goes to the person. The healing had nothing to do with the person. The Lord should be glorified by the healing. Oh, man, look at him run. Oh, look, no, 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 no. Look at what happened. They laid hands on him in the name of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Spirit came on him. He learned to walk and thank God for him. But Peter took the attention off the man who had been laying there for 40 years and put the attention on the Lord. Hallelujah. That's where a sermon should, should begin and end. Amen. So again, he, he took that attention from them. He showed compassion, the compassion of Christ, and he shared God's power with this man. And he's completely healed and converted to, to love Christ. Amen. God was glorified. The opportunity to preach was before them. And, and Peter began to preach again. And after that time, 2,000 more folks came. Amen. So we have 5,000 men who came to know the Lord Jesus Christ because of Peter's preaching in a few days. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The two apostles had no money. They had no stuff. But money was not what this man needed. He needed more than that. He needed salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. What the difference, what difference two, a few days make? A few days earlier, Peter had denied Christ three times. Amen. And now he's saying, look at me. Had a little girl in, 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 the, in the village that Peter wouldn't look at, was trying to run away from. And now he's saying, look at me. Amen. You, you can't say, look at me, unless you've got that boldness that comes from knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. That boldness that comes from, from having the Spirit of God living within you. Amen. He's not bragging, look at me, look what I've done. Look at me. Because I'm not the same. I've been walking through that that. that that gate called beautiful for years, my whole life. Peter and John been praying every day, three times a day, probably at the temple every day. They probably saw the same man every day. They probably saw him multiple times a day, every day. On this day, there was a difference because there, there was a resurrected Jesus Christ involved now. On this day, there was a difference because the Spirit of God had come at Pentecost. Amen? So now they, I ain't got no silver, I ain't got no gold. But what I got, hallelujah, I'm going to share something with you. Get up. There's some folks you've been walking by. Tell the truth. There's some folks in your family, in your circle of influence that you know, and they need a touch from Jesus. And you know who has it? You have it. And you ought to show that love and compassion that you, you got from knowing Christ Jesus in the part of your sins and share it with somebody. So they might be different. There's a Holy Ghost homie that you got in your, in your, your old town. You're going to go see mama this, this, this summer. When you go there, go and find them. I just want to tell you something about Jesus. Don't tell them about themselves because they'll tell you about yourself. <laughs> they'll say, I remember when. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you were right here with me. But share the love of Jesus Christ and allow God to be glorified. Allow God to change. Amen, amen, amen. Peter deflects all attention to Jesus Christ and the power in his name. He takes everything he's learned from the Lord Jesus Christ, and now he has received the power of the Spirit, and he puts it into, into, into practice for the Lord. We see the gifts of the Spirit begin to work and be used in the church the bold that causes us to wake up the spiritual gifts in us. If you're bold for the Lord, you got some gifts, you're going to use them. There's some folks who have gifts, but they don't use them because they don't, they're not bold. They don't know the Lord like that. Come to know the Lord like that, that you recognize that's in Jesus Christ that you live and breathe and 
have your being. Start and begin and end right there, knowing Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We find these words in Acts chapter 4, 3 to 4. It says, then Peter see, Peter, they, they seized Peter and John. And because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed. So the, the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. That tells me there was a lot of folks around that day. Amen? Amen. So why didn't they heal somebody else? No, because on this day, the Lord God had decided and determined that this lame beggar would be the one that they chose to allow the apostles to heal. Amen? Amen. When we find the scripture of the, of the, the lame beggar, beggar, we find that he was, he was lame from life, I mean, from birth. From birth, he was lame. That lets us know how, how hopeless his condition was. You, you might have failed or hurt your back. You can't walk a few days. That ain't no big deal. He's been lame for life. Amen? We find these words in Acts 4, 22. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. He wasn't no baby. He was carried to the temple gate called Beautiful Erde. To do what? To beg for money. The man had given up all hopes of ever being cured, so he begged. He wasn't asking anyone to touch him and heal him. He was asking for a handout. But Peter and John recognized he didn't need a handout. He needed a hand to get a leg up. And that's what they gave him. Amen? The apostles got his attention. I'm here to tell you, you got to give the Lord your attention sometimes. We want this, we want that. We never give God our attention. We make our prayer requests and we keep on moving like we like we talking to me. <laughs> when you pray, act like you're talking to the Lord God in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Spirit. And you got to come expecting something to happen. When Peter and John said, look at us, they meant look at us and expect something. Amen. I was talking to a brother this week. He said, I was someplace, and somebody said, pray for me. I started praying right then. You know what I'm talking about, Anthony. You're supposed to start praying right then. There's power. You have access to the power. So when someone says, will you pray for me? I'll pray for you when I get home. No, pray right then. Grab them by the hand. Get their attention, and let them know that you bring with you the Spirit of God into the equation. And things ought to be different because you know Jesus. Amen. The attention should go to the Lord Jesus Christ. Not to you and not to me. Amen. Look at us. Bleppo. To look. To discern. To see with the bodily eye. That's what look at us means. When I think of ministry, I think that we can all say look at us. Because we all have something that somebody else needs. Amen. Well, Pastor, I don't know as much scripture as you know. I don't know as much as you think I know. <laughs> it's not about how much you know. It's about how much you can apply to your life. Amen. How much you can share with somebody. Amen. You ain't got to know the whole Bible. No, no portion of it. No, no, that, no Romans wrote how to, how to help folks learn to know Jesus, who Jesus Christ is. There is meat and potatoes and there's some gravy. Sometimes you don't need the gravy. But when you go into a conversation with somebody, you're dealing with somebody who needs, has a major need, you ought to bring the meat and potatoes. That means you ought to bring the Spirit of God with you. Amen? I, 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 I ain't got no silver. I ain't got no gold. But let's sit around and talk about what I do have. I got the Spirit of God that lives within me. And the Jesus in me wants to love the Jesus in you. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They walked by this man many times, and now they had access to the power of the Holy Spirit, and they shared that with this man. It is the Spirit of God that lives in us that makes us peculiar. Who here is peculiar? I'm a peculiar person. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm different because I got the Spirit of God that guides me and directs me. Amen. Peculiar. It gives me boldness. It should give you boldness and say, look at us and mean it. Amen. They wanted his undivided attention. That's what they got. They wanted him to expect that they would give him something other than money. When folks come to church every Sunday and leave the same way, something wrong. It's not something wrong with the music, Brother Bill. It's not something wrong with the praise, deacons. It's not something wrong with the preaching, amen. It's something wrong with you. 
When you come not expecting anything, you're going to leave here with nothing. When you come into the house of prayer and you expect something, I'm here to tell you, you're going to get something. What do you come expecting? Amen. When I come to church on Sunday, whether I'm preaching or not, I expect to meet the Lord right there. I expect to feel the, the Holy Spirit moving and, and breathing in my life. I expect to hear something I've never heard before. Amen. It might come from a young girl, a young boy. I'm going to hear something because the Spirit of God is here. Come expecting to hear something from God. What did you come here today to, to experience? You came to hear the choir sing? They were nice. Or do you come to, to, to expect to meet the Lord right here? Did you bring your problems to the altar today and, and, and give them to the Lord and let him take those away? Or did you come here and keep your problems to yourself? And when you leave, you, you left them at the, at the coat rack out front. On the way out, you put them back on your back and take them back home. Leave them right there. Come expect the Lord to take those birds away from you and to make your life a little lighter, a little easier because of the Jesus in you. When you come to church every Sunday, or some Sundays, when you sit at home in your pajamas or your bathrobe or your Bugs Bunny ears on right now, I don't care what you're doing. If you listen to the Word of God, you ought to expect something. Amen? Who been in their bed just minding their business, watching, watching you know, somebody preach on television and got, 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 a, got a spirit on them had to jump out of the bed? Just minding... <laughs> Somebody laid something. You just got to come out. You just got to, oh, Lord, that was, so, that was so good. I'm going to use that again. And the Lord will work on you no matter how you, you receive his word. Amen. Amen. I, I've been sitting in my chair in the office listening to baby, uh, uh, you know, uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Tony, Tony Evans, uh, even Pastor Joel Olsen. They said something. I said, hallelujah, I, I got to get up. I've been driving my car, listening to the radio, and, and hearing the songs going, on, and the head of the car walking. And I just got to stop the car and get out. <laughs> Sometimes you got to recognize that the Spirit of God is in you, and He wants you to do something about it. Amen. He wants you to lift your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. <laughs> I don't know about you, but Frank, he's been too good to me to sit down and. Some folks, we've been here for, you know, a little bit of time, an hour and a half, and they look, they watch 20 times. It ain't moving no fast because you're looking at your watch. I'm, I'm meddling now, Brother Espy. You know, I'm messing, meddling, amen, amen, amen. Let, let me tell this story. This, watch, there was a, this young man, he had a watch on, and it was a nice watch, and uh, he was in the airport, and he was very in a rush. He had two big bags, he was carrying his luggage, and this man stopped and said, you know what time? He said, yeah, it is now, it is 6 o'clock. Uh, A.M. It is uh, 23 degrees outside. It is, uh, he went down a line. Just, he said, that watch tell you all that? He said, yes. He said, I got to have that watch. He said, no, it's not for sale. He said, I want to have that watch. He said, the watch is not for sale. He said, I get $1,000. Oh, the watch might be for sale. <laughs> he, he said, well, I'm an inventor, and I invented this watch, and, and I, I can't sell it. He said, I'll give you $2,000. Oh, no, I can't. He went $5,000. $5,000 for my watch. No, I can't sell it. It's my only watch. I can't. Oh, he said, that watch tells you everything. He tells you, airspeed, oh, man, he was so impressed with the watch. He said, okay, uh, okay GPS on the watch, everything. It sounds like a Fitbit, don't it? But he said, um, $10,000. The man said, okay, here's the watch. He gave the man the watch, and the man, I could catch my flight. He ran off, got down there to the runway, and the man came down. He's dragging his two suitcases. Come, come, hold on. He said, what's, what's, what else you need? He said, well, you need the batteries for the watch. <laughs> We don't, we don't have to carry the power with us. The power is in us. Amen. The Holy Spirit lives within you and me. It costs you nothing to carry it around. It costs Christ Jesus, his life. Amen. I, I didn't mean to say all that. We got like a few minutes. Frank, let me slow down, Brother Frank. Let me slow down a little bit. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 17. Consequently, faith 
comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the words of Christ. It's about faith in Jesus Christ. Building our faith by spending time in the, the biblical writ, understanding what it says for ourselves. We won't have faith in Jesus Christ and his name unless we understand who he is. And that understanding comes by spending time in his word. If we would just take time to hide his word in our heart, that we might not sin against the Lord. Amen. It's in there. Amen. Um, I do have three points. <laughs> Let me share the three points. Um, let's look at three points concerning direct attention to the source of the power. I can blame it on the song. That's why we're so late. It's the song. It was Lisa, if Lisa hadn't sang, we'd be fine. <laughs> 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 them chains were falling. Thank you, sister boy. Amen. We are not, first point, we are not the source of the power. We think we the source of the power. We think we all that. Tell the truth. Come on, tell the truth. We do. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, verses 11 and 12 of our scripture today. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why do you surprise? Why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? They're saying, no, it had nothing to do with us. We did not make him walk. They recognize the omnipotence of Jesus Christ, and they believe it. They believe they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. Amen. Philippians 4, 13. They were not. As the others, they were not astonished because of the power of the Lord, because they knew where the source of the power came from. When you don't know where the source of power comes from, you're astonished by everything. But when I see a miracle, I say, ain't nothing but Jesus. Have, have anyone experienced a miracle this week? I, I, I experience one every week. It ain't got to be a big one. But I was about to go through that yellow light. That dude would have wiped me out with that... I say miracle. Uh, one day I was going and got these cars now. They'll stop themselves. Thank you, Jesus. My car stopped itself because I was looking the other way. Miracle. Amen. It took a miracle to invent that Tesla. Amen. <laughs> but that bad boy stops on his own. Thank you, Jesus. Who got one of the cars you get too close to it? It hit, it hit, hit breaks. Tell the truth. Come on. We got some cars. I still say that's a miracle. Amen. I was coming, driving down 95 the other day, and, and I went over that, that same area that this morning I looked up, and the whole place, the whole road's gone. That could have been us driving down there, and the whole road is gone. I count that as a miracle. Thank you, Jesus, for having me my behind at home where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> oh, y'all know about miracles. Miracles. Things that God has done for us. Amen. We shouldn't be astonished. We shouldn't be surprised by them. We should understand the source of those miracles. Amen. Peter wanted to direct their attention away from himself and John and the lame man towards the source of the power, which is Jesus Christ. He made it plain that they had no power but had received power from Jesus and recognized they could use that power in Jesus' name to do what they needed to do. We find these words in Ephesians chapter, uh, chapter 1, Ephesians 1, 19-23. And his incomparable great power for us who believe. Power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion and every, and every name that is invoked not only in the, the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is the body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Power. He has all power. He is the source of our power. Thank you, Jesus. The source of power whew, comes from God. The Father has been been given to, to, to the Son to, to dispense to you and I in his name. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. The Son is the radiant of God's glory and exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sin, he sat down at what? The right hand 
and of the majesty in heaven. So he became a much superior to the angels as the name he has, has inherited is superior to theirs. His name is superior to the angels. It's a name that's above all names. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for that name. We can do what we do in his name because he has all power and shares that power with you and I as believers in Jesus Christ. In Matthew Gospel 19, 26, we, these words, Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. That's um, omnip omnipotent. All power. All power. That's what Jesus Christ has. Amen. I'm often reminded of two truths. Meantime, folks are trying to pump your head up, and I'm here to tell you, take this away from, from this sermon. Two things um, that I know, and you should know them too. First thing, there is a God. Second thing, I'm not him. Tell yourself that. There is a God, and I'm not him. The source of my power, the source of my being is Jesus Christ. Amen? So hang on to that, amen, if you would. So that first point, we are not the source of the power. The second point that I would like to share, Jesus was was raised with all power. Yes, he died on the cross. Yes, he was placed in a borrowed tomb for three days. On the third day, he, he ascended. I mean, he rose, was resurrected. Amen. 40 days later, he ascended back to glory. But he came back with all power. All power was in his hand. In Acts chapter 3, verses 13 to 15, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over. Think of the, listen to these words, you, you. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. Thank God for his word. You, 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 you. Can you imagine sitting that sucking chest wounds? You, you, you. He wasn't talking to me. But that's what they did. But then God raised him on the third day. Thank you, Jesus. You killed him, but God raised him from, from the dead with all power in his hand. Peter and John healed the, the beggar. But this was proof that Jesus Christ was alive and the power was available. It was proof. Matthew's Gospel 28, 16, 18. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. All the power, authority, power has been given to Jesus Christ. That's what he has after he came back, was, was resurrected. Amen. The name of Jesus has such power because of his glorification and his, 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 his resurrection. He was glorified by, by God the Father. Amen? Thank you, God, for glorifying Jesus Christ. Peter reminds the people that it is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob that has glorified his servant Jesus, raising him from the dead. That's who we're talking about today. That's where the power comes from. Peter didn't take credit for the miracle, but pointed to the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He exercised faith when he told the man to walk, and the lame man exercised faith when he jumped up and obeyed and walked. Thank you, Jesus. There is one major difference between Jesus Christ's miracles and Peter's miracle. When Jesus healed someone, he just said, get up. <laughs> he didn't have to say, in the name of Jesus. But you and I don't just go and lay hands on someone and say, I'm Telling you in my name, get up. Lay your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Get up. Jesus healed by his own authority. And we can heal and we can do miracles by the authority that has been given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3.20, now to him who is able to do it miserably, miserably, more than we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. There is power at work within you. If you know Jesus Christ, there's power in you. And every now and then, you got to call on that power in the name of Jesus. Help me do, God, what you need me to do, what I know I can't do without your power. Amen? The apostles Peter and John, they are the initial leaders of the, the new church. Amen? 
he, this healing at the temple, it would give them some entree into the, the world there. For they, they could plainly speak and preach about Jesus Christ who was crucified, who was resurrected, amen, and now is the long-standing, long-awaited Messiah has come into the world and has fulfilled all predictions of the Old Testament. It demonstrates to the people that Jesus Christ is the one who was raised with all power. Not some power, but all power. In 1 Peter, the first part of, of chapter 2, of cha 1 Peter 3, 2, excuse me, 21, 21b, 21b, first, the second part of 20, verse 21, and, and then verse 22. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is, God's, is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. They're all in submission to Jesus, who is the Christ. He has the power. Hallelujah. has sat down at the right hand of God. That power is available to you. That power is available to me. It's available to believers to do ministry, not to get rich, not to have good, uh, get rich schemes. I get a call every week from someone who has a get rich scheme for me. And I say, how does that benefit the Lord? You ain't got to understand, brother pastor, but you're going to get some money, now I'm going to get some money. <laughs> it's, I believe there's something wrong with this picture. I'm going to do it in the name of Jesus Christ. He ain't getting no money? What's up with that? But that's how some folks think. We find these words in Acts chapter 19, 13 through 16. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, you know, Jesus I know, <laughs> and Paul I know. I know about him, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. Be careful, use the name of Jesus Christ. If I see you running down the street naked and bleeding, I know you've been using the name of Jesus Christ improperly. Amen? In the name of Jesus, give me a dollar. No, that's not the way you use the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But who are you? Then the man who had evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. Amen. You ever seen anybody like that? Running for the hills. Amen. There's power in the name of Jesus, but only to be used by those who are connected with Jesus Christ. Amen. Those who have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ can use the power of his name. Those are the ones that he has shared his power with. It's not just for anybody, but for those who believe. Amen. So again, we thank God for that second point where Jesus was raised with all power. Third and final point, there is power in the name of Jesus. This, this would be a good place for that song, Sister Lisa. This would have been a good place. She already sang it, so we good. Amen. We find in Acts chapter 3, verse 16, by faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him as you can see, completely healed him by the faith in the name of Jesus who is Christ. Peter is answering that question that has been asked. He's answering the original question about the power behind this lame man's healing. And he says, by faith in the name of Jesus, amen. Peter let them know that this power became effective through the faith in the name of Jesus Christ, not because he called on the name. It is faith in the name of Jesus Christ. You can run around and say, Jesus, 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 but if you don't believe in Jesus, it don't mean nothing. In the name of Jesus, get up. In the name of Jesus, be healed. I ain't got no silver. Ain't got much gold. But in the name of Jesus, get up. You and I got to get somebody up this week. For you and I may be the only, only spirit, that, that good spirit that comes around this week. Amen. We find that the boldness that we find in, in the apostle Peter, it comes from, from Acts chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. These words, they had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power, what name did you do this? They wanted to know. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, 
Then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. That's where his boldness comes. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he raised him. Amen. Keith Gangle, he says that Luke uses the phrase in the name of Jesus 33 times in the book of Acts. That's power in the name of Jesus. To invoke the name of Jesus is a call upon the authority of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, my Lord. Who called on Jesus' name this week? In the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. That Brandon back there clapping for me? To break every chain. There is power. In the name of Jesus. You got some chains to break every chain. There's power in the name of Jesus. Anybody bereaved right now? To break every chain. Brother Ted lost a good friend this week, Brother Ted. Many, many years, man. God bless you, man. There's power in the name of Jesus. Folks lost loved ones, this Loretta. There's power. There's power. In the name of Jesus, plain and simple, there is power. We must say to God, be the glory. In a real sense, Peter was doing what Jesus was, healing folks, but he was doing it in the name of Jesus. In essence, he was carrying on the ministry that Jesus had started here on earth. You and I are doing the same thing. We're carrying on the ministry of Jesus Christ. If we allow the Lord to use the gifts that he's blessed us with, in the name of Jesus. Zechariah 4, 6 says, So he said to me, This is the word of the Lord through the river bow, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Do things by the spirit of God in the name of Jesus who is the Christ, that God might be the glory. Can somebody say to God be the glory? For the great things he has done. Get a load of hand. He's worthy. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Why is it there? To break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray this day that we'll be able to exercise the power that's within us, God. Your spirit has been deposited into us, God. It will never leave us nor forsake us. So let us call the name of Jesus Christ to invoke that power to do your work and do your will. Father God, we recognize that you are able to do all things, God. And we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. We pray, Father, knowing you're able, we're praying that you're willing to use us to do great things in your name that we might divert all the attention to Jesus Christ. It's not about us, not about what we got, not about our gifts, not about our good looks, not about our, our resources, it's about the power that comes from knowing Jesus Christ and the pardon of our sins. So bless us this day, God, to be your vessels in this sin sick world, to tell folks about Jesus Christ and about the power that's available to them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you, family.